Don't be from those who become heedless. The, pow- the, the remedy against heedlessness is remembrance. And before Allah mentioned remembrance, He mentioned what's the best form of remembrance, which was Quran itself. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبْ So by the way, in the, these last two ayat, which problem has been addressed? In conclusion, غفلة. Which problem is still left? Okay, what is left? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ وَيُسَبِّحُونَ لَهُ those who are those who before your master those who are close to your master they're in the company of your master they don't show any arrogance in worshiping him they declare his perfection and they fall into sajda before him where the surah began arrogance was tied to a lack of sajda with iblis and the surah ends and they make sajda to him they know not to make that mistake it's beautiful it's such a cohesive argument about the, 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 the two things that will destroy us. Arrogance and heedlessness. So I, in, in, in my conclusion to this surah, I just want to remind myself and all of you of how dangerous this, these two diseases are and how they can creep, in, creep up into our lives. And how Allah Azza wa when He's reminding us of these things, it's not just an ancient reminder, it's, some, it's a living problem. What are the devices of arrogance and what are the devices of heedlessness? The devices of arrogance today are self-image. That's the device of arrogance. You're so concerned with what you look like, what people think of you. You're concerned with your impression. What, you know, Iblis has no problem doing sajda to Allah, he's done many before. It's in front of others, I have to do sajda to another creation, it's now comparison to somebody else. So you're, when, you're, when you're too conscious of, conscious of others around you, Two things happen. One, you're constantly comparing yourself to others and you want to make sure somehow you're better. And two, when you're so concerned with others, you no longer become concerned with Allah Azza wa Jalla. You forget that. You lose sight of that. These are the makings of kibr. Self-image. You're obsessed with yourself. Self-indulgence. The, the ghafla, the big problem of ghafla is basically everything that takes you away from remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla. Now what are those things today? Not just in a general sense, today. It's 3G. It's 4G. It's Netflix. It's Hulu. It's YouTube. It's Facebook. It's TV shows. It's downloads. It's video games. It's one thing after another. The new movie that comes out. Then another movie comes out. Which ibadah do you and I do that 90 minutes gets our full attention? 90 minutes, we don't even think about anything else. People walk into a movie theater, three hour movie, two and a half hour movie, 110 minute movie, 102 minute movie. They lose attention for even a second. Full concentration. Who leaves them alone? Shaitan just left the building. You come into the masjid, you're trying to pray two rakahs. Two rakahs. And you're praying the shortest surahs you know. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati anna yasifoon Allahu Akbar Second raka'ah Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen Allahu Akbar <laughs> And even in that, what happens? Oh my God, what's for lunch? What's for lunch? Who's this guy next to me? You know, did I make wudu? Where am I? Is it the weekend? Did I study for the exam? Oh my God we are addicted to entertainment and our addiction to entertainment is paving the way for our ghafla. Now, what are the consequences of that? The consequences of ghafla aren't just limited to you don't do dhikr. There are additional consequences. When you forget Allah, you forget to be appreciative of Him and you also forget you're not as fearful of Him. When those two things go away, what floodgates are open? Sin. Maybe it's harmless entertainment at first. Maybe you're playing like Pac-Man. Maybe it's harmless, no haram in it. Maybe Mrs. Pac-Man is not wearing hijab or something. But it's not that haram. But when ghafla happens and you're not conscious of Allah anymore, then, I don't know, some commercial plays in the middle, and you see some image you shouldn't see, and you don't change the channel. Your ghafla lets you stay and watch and watch and watch, and every time you take in sin, there's a little stain on your heart and my heart and more and more and more until the whole heart gets covered in dirt, mud. 
And at that point, when you pray, you know nothing's going on. And you're wondering, how come nothing's going on? You cannot remove that mud with, uh, without effort. I can't remove that mud without effort. We have to cleanse ourselves from an addiction to entertainment. We have to, we have to like, get it out of our system. We have to remove it from our system. We have to replace that time with dhikr. If, they could, if you don't have the concentration to sit and recite Astaghfirullah a thousand times, which is okay, you don't even have the... And what's going to happen also? Allah says recite Qur'an, right? The, the remedy. What's going to happen when you recite Qur'an every time? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. A'udhu Billahi Mishra'i Bismillah Rahman Rahim Dhalik Al-Kitabu La Rayba Fihu You will pass out before you know it. Happens or no? <sighs> Shaitan is amazing at hypnosis. Amazing. You're so tired. You're sleepy. Just go to sleep. And you're about to go to sleep. Contrast it. You're about to go to sleep. It's 12 o'clock at night. You woke up at 5 in the morning. You need, your body needs rest. Your eyes are crying. And somebody says, Yo, I just got a new movie. Your eyes are like this. Are you going to finish the whole movie or no? Guaranteed, you'll finish the whole thing. And you haven't even prayed Isha yet. You haven't even prayed Isha yet. And so you watch the whole movie, you had energy for that. And somebody said, hey, oh there's some soda downstairs. You'll run downstairs and get the soda, or get the chips or whatever. But the four rakahs for Isha at least that you could have made, you don't have the energy for, well, just a little later. Let me just lie down for a second. I'll get up and pray. And then you woke up at 10 in the morning. And you feel bad for about 5 minutes. You feel bad. It's not like you won't feel bad. Maybe there's some, some soul left inside. You feel bad about 5 minutes. And then what's going to happen after that? What's going on tonight? Let's do something tonight again. And it starts all over again. SubhanAllah. What did Allah say? Call on Allah when? Bil hudui wal asan. Respect the times of prayer. That's part of fighting ghafla. Don't trivialize the times of prayer. Don't allow your, your, your nights will destroy your life. I'm telling you. Ghafla, the battle against ghafla is the battle against doing bad things at night. Doing stu- making stupid decisions at night. Pray Isha and go to sleep. Pray Isha and go to sleep. Keep yourself busy with good things. If you can't, at least keep yourself busy with sports. Something productive, exercise, something. Just not entertainment. At least when you're exercising, you're not taking in things that are destroying your heart. At least it's not, that's not happening. You know, at least you're just, at least you're feeding your body, but not ruining your soul. <laughs> Entertainment is not feeding your body, and it's also at the same time, destroying your soul. It's doing both. That's the time we're living in. And I tell you, one thing leads to another. It starts with an innocent thing. It starts with a YouTube video, and a Hulu thing, and a Netflix thing, and a this thing, and a that thing, and eventually it grows into filth. People get addicted, addicted to filth. And then it doesn't stop, because the virtual is not enough, and they move to other things. These floodgates, they start with one thing. They start small. You know, the good and the bad. Awal meal tabda bi khatwa. The good and the bad. You know? That's, this, this is a real battle in our lives. A real serious battle in our lives. And I tell you, when you study the example of Bani Israel in this surah, a mountain hanging on top of their head wasn't enough. You would think, what kind of evil people are these? But I tell you, are, are we the kind of people, if a mountain was hanging over our heads, we'd quit the movie forever and ever? Or we'd go back? <laughs> it's before we point the finger at Bani Israel and say, man, them Jews... I don't know what they had for breakfast, but they were messed up. Must have been something in that manda and salwa or something. Nope. That's... I tell you personally, my belief is the amount of heedlessness and the amount of arrogance and the amount of evil that we find in the Muslim community across the world today, including here. Bani Israel, that's the, their behavior that's mentioned in the Qur'an, they would want our autograph. I, we thought we were bad, you guys. <laughs> We thought we were being bad with the fish. What you guys have done is incredible. With inheritance law in Islam, you guys are amazing. That's some good stuff. We've taken the cake. We need to go back and start at the basics. The first step is to get rid of ghafla. <laughs>